Hello friends, this video on fractions and decimals part 16 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now that we have discussed a lot of things about fractions, it is turn for the decimal numbers now. So we are going to talk about decimal numbers. How do we multiply decimals? How do we divide decimals? So that is all we are going to discuss. Now the first thing that we will discuss is why decimal numbers? Why do we even have something like decimal numbers? We have whole numbers, natural numbers, integers, fractions. Now why again another set of numbers called decimal numbers? Do we really need them? So let us try to observe some fractions because fractions and decimal numbers are very closely related to each other. So we will observe these two fractions. So the first fraction that we consider is let's say 5 by 2 and the second fraction that we considered is 240 divided by 3. So how can you write 5 by 2? This is an improper fraction which can also be written as 2 1 by 2 in the form of mixed fraction. Right. So when you look at this fraction what is 2? 2 is a whole number. Right. So we know what is 2. It is a whole number. It is very well represented on the number line as well. So when you look at the number line, where is 2? If I ask you where is 2, you will say this is 2. Now if I ask you, what about this half? Where is half? Half is basically a fraction. So half is basically, whenever you talk about any fraction, it is basically talking about the division operation. Because any fraction is nothing but ratio of two integers. So this half is nothing but 1 by 2. It is not one specific number. It is a, a ratio of 1 and 2. So how do we represent this half as numbers? Like 2 is a whole number which is seen on the number line. How do we represent this half as a number? Because fractions could be 240 by 3. Now when you look at the value of 240 by 3, it is 80. So 80 is again a number, it is a whole number and the value is greater than 1 and it is distinctly seen on the number line somewhere. But when you look at this value half, do you think half is greater than 1? No, half is something which is less than 1. So how do we represent these fractions like 1 by 2, 3 by 5, 3 by 4, 2 by 3? How do we represent them as numbers? Because basically they are, they are also numbers but they are not one particular number. They are like ratio of two numbers. They are fractions. So is there any way that we can represent these fractions in terms of numbers which can be more easily represented anywhere? Maybe on a number line as well. But normally a number line will only have the integers. Okay. So with these two examples which I have considered. That is the 5 by 2 and the 240 by 3 examples. We see that we always have two categories of fractions. One type of fraction will have a smaller numerator and bigger denominator. And we call such fractions as proper fractions. The other type of fraction will have a bigger numerator and a smaller denominator, right? So this type of fractions are called proper fractions and these type of fractions are called improper fractions. Now we also have mixed fractions but again mixed fractions can also be written as improper fractions. So basically these are the two types, proper and improper. So we observe that whenever your numerator is smaller than the denominator, the overall value of the fraction is always less than 1. And whenever it is the opposite, that is when the numerator is more than the denominator, the overall value of the fraction is greater than 1. Now this is something which can be very easily verify, verified. You pick up some fractions, any fraction that comes to your mind. Try to find out its value and you will see that it is less than 1 and it is greater than 1. Now the question is, when we talk about values of fraction, what kind of values are we talking about? For example, when you look at the value of this fraction, 240 by 3, we get its value as 80. So we can say that, okay, 80 is greater than 1. If I talk about a fraction like 2 by 3, so how will you find its value? Because when you actually divide 2 by 3, 2 is lesser than 3. So how do we divide it? 
so we actually need some kind of number which can represent this 2 by 3 also as a number and then that number can be compared whether it is greater than 1 or less than 1 so are you able to understand the gap so all these fractions whether it is 2 by 3 or it is 1 by 5 or it is 5 by 10 or it is 5 by 6 you talk about any such fraction which is a proper fraction how do you find its value so in order to find the value of that fraction you actually need the decimal numbers in fact that is what the decimal number does so these decimal numbers they give values of fractions and that is where you get value for example when you talk about 1 by 2 so what is the value of 1 by 2 so 1 by 2 is half all of us know that but what is that value of 1 by 2 the value of 1 by 2 is 0 0.5 and this 0 0.5 is a decimal number. So what is the uniqueness of the decimal number? The presence of this point and this value is less than 1. So basically all these proper fractions that we talk about they all are less than 1. Now if you look at this number line where do you think these proper fractions lie? When you talk about the improper fractions, they can lie anywhere beyond 1. But what about the proper fractions? They lie anywhere below 1? No, that's because the values of these proper fractions, as long as we are talking about the positive values, so their values will lie between 0 and 1. So only in this much small space, all these proper fractions will accommodate whether it is 1 by 5, whether it is 5 by 6, whether it is 10 by 12 or it is it is any proper fraction which is definitely positive such that the numerator and the denominator are both positive. So any proper fraction has to lie between 0 and 1 because the value of that fraction will always be less than 1. So that would lie somewhere here. So now here we will see that how exactly the presence of decimal numbers helped us because with this we get to know that when decimal num if decimal numbers had not been there in that case we could have never come up with values of these proper fractions. So in order to have values of the proper fractions uh, we needed decimal numbers So not only the proper fractions again to remind you even improper fractions for example if you think of 9 by 2 so how will you represent 9 by 2 as a number see 8 by 2 you can represent as 4 but how will you represent 9 by 2 so 9 by 2 is actually 4.5 so here again you need decimal numbers so basically in order to represent fractions as values you needed decimal numbers so this point is clear Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four-step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.